Ladies and gentlemen, I know you're wondering what the governor of Louisiana is doing on your television screens at this time. Presenting His Excellency Huey Pierce Long, the dictator of Louisiana, the enigma who is making many Americans regret that the United States ever purchased Louisiana. Instead of you hearing about strip teasers, instead of you hearing about tall girls, instead of you hearing about Uncle Earl crazy, if I was crazy and Galveston, if I was crazy and Manly Mill, I'm still crazy. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Is Louisiana politics really different? Yeah, I think that in Louisiana, uh, I think Mardi Gras and elections run hand in hand as the number one pastime. You know, I think Louisiana politics is the greatest in the nation, myself. I think it's disgusting. It really is. So they're corrupt. <laughs> so they're corrupt. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. You know, Louisiana might join the 20th century before it ends. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath. <laughs> Louisiana boys, they're raised on politics down in the city and out in the sticks. Louisiana boys want to go all the way. They want to be governor someday. At 21, they head for law school after hours, perch high on a bar stool, studying hard the laws of their selection, planning for that future election. Back at home, they open up a practice, hanging singles from yours to Nactus, charging them fees, fat and huge, because what they crave is fat and loose. Louisiana boys, you raised on politics, down in the city and out in the sticks. Louisiana boys want to go all the way, they want to be governor someday. Take it now, political thing. Well, one thing that's unique about um, the politics of Louisiana, and specifically the politics of New Orleans, is the role that is played in the election after election by a grocery bag. We have in, in uh, the New Orleans area a, a grocery chain called Schwegman, which is known for um, selling high volume, relatively cheap groceries, and it's become something of a hero of the uh, people. And come election time, Mr. Schwegman, the owner, will print on the bag his endorsement so that every customer going home will take with them Mr. Schwegman's advice on what to do in this election. Have you ever heard of any other grocery stores doing something like this <laughs> anywhere? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. But I tell you, I, uh, I would encourage uh, uh, other people in the industry to do it. I think it's, uh, I think it's, the, uh, it's a good American way of... Of, uh, of electing fine people to office without spending uh, any money. Do you know what's on your bag? Down a minute. Or are you running for me?
starting in life in this ramshackle house, Long ratted and raved his way into the chief executive's chair of the sovereign state of Louisiana. How many men ever went to a barbecue and would let one man take off the table what's been intended for nine tenths of the people to eat? The only way you'll ever be able to feed the balance of the people is to make that man come back and bring back some that go being that no business. <laughs> His career was a stony, violent journey through the sometimes puzzling maze of political life. He was never without his bodyguards, confessing to friends that he fully expected to die at the hands of an assassin when his time was up. His feuds were monumental, like the time that the mayor of New Orleans crossed swords with the fiery governor. Voters at the city election had to be protected by the militia as a result of that one. But as far as the man on the street was concerned, Huey Long could do no wrong. And the kingfish loved the parade, like this one on the way to an LSU football game. Huey had built the famous university, and it was his pride and joy, particularly its football teams. We've opened up night schools to educate the adults in it. We've paved the highway. We've built three bridges. We have built a new capital. We have taken the insane out of the jail cell and placed them in modern institutions. We have eliminated barbarism. We have shut down the lottery. We have closed up the gambling dock. We have abolished the vice area. And now, the corporate element of this state that were cheap with gold, hand in hand with them, who profited by them, who ransacked this state for the element of their allies, are being told what they can do and what they can't do, what they will pay, what they can't keep from paying for the welfare of the people of Louisiana, and we expect to have this state ruled by the people and not by the Lord and the interest of high finance. He was a vital man who had the common touch of a backwoods politician. His flaming oratory plummeted him up the political ladder at an alarming rate. In 1933, there was even talk of a long for president movement in the next election. His theme song, Every Man a King, became Louisiana's unofficial state anthem. Huey himself had a hand in writing it. But his meritorious rise to fame and power that carried him as far as the United States Senate ended in the state capitol building in Baton Rouge, just as he himself had prophesied. This was his assassin. Dr. Carly Weiss, Jr., a prominent Baton Rouge eye specialist. Weiss, shown here on an earlier pleasure cruise, was reputed to have met Long in the Capitol and fired a fatal Luger bullet into his side. Two days later, on September 10, 1935, Huey Long was dead. His widow was appointed to fill out his term as United States Senator. She accepted the commission from the governor as Louisiana joined her in mourning the passing of its champion, the kingfish, Huey Long. Every man a king. Fine. I want you to play it over for these people. And if you like it, I want you to put it out. Every man a king, every man a king, for you can be a millionaire. But there's something belonging to others. There's enough for all people to share. When it's sunny June and December through, or in the winter time or spring, there'll be peace without end. Every neighbor a friend with a free man a king. What do you think about that? I think it's fine.
I want to be governor on the up hill where I can help the poor man, the bill man, the rich man, if he'll behave himself. The legacy of Huey Long continued with his brother Earl. Many people remember Earl as outspoken, impulsive, and colorful, if not crazy. But it was Earl who instituted populist platforms that became an integral part of Louisiana political culture, programs people heard about at old-time stump-speaking rallies. They tell you that Louisiana is the highest tax state in the nation. Ain't so. Consider what we give and what we do for our people. It's the lowest tax state in the nation. Oh, yeah, we have police juries. We have the cities. All that. You know what they do in Texas? They let them root for themselves. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, the early long days, uh, very few people had the radios, they had no television, and they say, hey, man, the governor's coming to campaign in our town, and let's go out, and they'd start cooking. It was dangerous to be a chicken in those days, because if you were, they'd probably barbecue you for that day. The Earl K. Long Program, presenting... Jack Grumion, candidate for Attorney General. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Grumion. Now, I cannot tell you all about this platform, but there are four important planks in that platform that I would like to tell you about. And the four important planks in that platform are these. Number one, no new tax. Governor Long says that there will be absolutely no new taxes. When Earl Long became governor in, in 1956, I believe it was, he promised every man and woman over 65 years old, he said, 30 days, when I go in that mansion, you're going to get a $50 check. My mother and father was living there. My mother died in my home about... 10 years ago. She got a, a $50. She never was on the welfare. She got that $50 till she died. Uh, this was a state that people depended on politics uh, for the, a source of income, uh, for, he for health, for education. It was a true welfare state. And in a welfare state, when you depend on politics for your, for your well-being, you have a great interest in politics. There's only two classes of people that can get first-class hospital treatment. That's the poor poor and the rich rich. All right? Why, it's so high, old man, man can't afford to be sick. So I guess that's where they practice that Christian science, you know? This state belongs to the people. I belong to you. Never has anyone come since the days of you alone to pour in his heart and on his shoulders the burdens and the concerns of people. I know what it is to go to bed at night and wonder if your child wakes up in pain at 2 o'clock in the morning that you're not going to be able to get a doctor or medical assistance. I know what it is to see people without food. I grew up in that kind of an environment. I don't want it to happen to anybody. 
Over the years, populism retained its appeal in Louisiana. In the 1970s and 80s, it again dominated the political scene through its latest incarnation, Edwin W. Edwards, perhaps the most colorful Louisiana politician of all. You feel it. When you become a dead man's president, you feel his presence. You don't have to see it. There's something about that man, just like the Pope, that you get cling to. Who built the four-lane highway in front of this facility? Yeah. Who's building the interstate to Freeport? Yeah. Who built the stadium dome? Yeah. Who paved the parking lot at the football stadium? Yeah. Who's four-laning the highway to Abbeville? Yeah. Who's going to be your governor for the next four years? Edwards governed as an heir of the law. He rewrote the state constitution, reorganized state government, used oil boom dollars to increase social spending, and brought blacks into the political mainstream. And he was wildly popular. All right, darling, come on here. Don't you tell your boyfriend about this now. Not the before. Flamboyant, often outrageous, the target of numerous grand juries, Edwards loved gambling and women, and was rather cavalier on the subject of public ethics. Well, I think that it's standard for people at my level in politics to be investigated by the Internal Revenue Service. It's just part of the job. The people out here have all heard the stories of his womanizing and his gambling and corruption. Why do they love Evan Edwards? This guy looked at me and said, he doesn't drink or smoke. I really was impressed with the skit that the five representatives of the women members of the legislature did. This emphasis on women, this new thrust that was, I mean, this new, uh, <laughs> this new commitment we have to the new commitment we have to the involvement of women in the political process. Uh, certainly, they, they said it very well. The motto from here on out is, up with skirts and down with pants. <laughs> Many times you'll explain things to people who've just moved into the area, and you see this sudden look of bewilderment or disbelief as if to say, you mean your elected officials can get away with saying something like that? And you say, well, sure. And then you have to remind yourself, oh, that's right. They're not from Louisiana. Well, one thing about it was he's never lied about it. You know, if he goes to Las Vegas, he goes. And uh, <coughs> so, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with those colors. Saying it took one opponent an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes, Edwards boasted that he couldn't lose unless he was found in bed with a dead girl or a live boy. And he was right. Populist in style, a powerful stump speaker, yet at ease with modern television campaigning, Edwards set the tone for politicians throughout the state. Who was the greatest politician you've seen in Louisiana during your lifetime? My lifetime, it would have to be every time I shave and look in the mirror, I see him. 